the brand. We'll add in the stream. Here. <laughs> Check that out. Hey, what's I'll up, Johnny? Oh, great. I, I don't know if I can hear you now. You should not be muted. Check can, your mic. Can you hear right? me now? Mic check, one, two. Mic Maybe check. It's my TV. Let me see. Uh, yo, chat, if if, uh, if everyone's there. See, I had this damn problem hear. earlier. Edit mic settings. Echo cancellation. Automatically adjust volume. All right. Let me see if I undo that. Test Talk to me, Brand. Hey, hey, can you hear me? Can you guys hear him? Yeah, they can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> you hear Brand, but I don't get to hear Brand. How come I don't get to hear Brand? Stupid, stupid stuff. Oh, no! <laughs> now I can't even see Brand. <laughs> now I've done it. Oh, I've done it now. HDMI one. Okay, I got brand back visually. Now let's see here in my sound here. That's up a hundred. Testing, testing. Damn it. <laughs> well, I thought I was gonna bring Brand on. You could hear him. Say hi to everybody, Brand. I'm gonna look around. <laughs> hey, how's it going, everyone? Uh, yeah, ho hope everyone's doing well. I'm gonna message Johnny. I think the the speaker default might be on the on the wrong selection. So let me just do that. But, uh, but yeah, shout out to everyone, all the hexagons, right? It's a, it's a great day to be a staker, you know, kind of play on words of a great day to be a gangster. But yeah, I appreciate Johnny, you know, his, uh, his talks are always super informative and it's, uh, it's really cool to listen to people that have a lot of experience, right? Because someone like himself or myself or just some of the other hexagons, actually a lot of the hexagons, they've, uh, they've made mistakes when staking or they've, they've learned how to optimize the uh, you know the output that you get for for staking so it's a it's, it's a great day. Ha! I can hear you. <laughs> okay, cool, nice, good good to see you, Johnny. I had to I had to change my device here and uh, that was I can turn you down a little bit now because I got you like at like a hundred so like you're rocking the house right now. <laughs> <laughs> nice man, I, I totally know how that goes. Well, yeah, you know, I, I like the uh, the talk that you're having right now, and and I was saying when when I was muted that uh, they're always very educational. You know, I mean, uh, people should definitely be uh, following some of the the hexagons like yourself and myself and those that have kind of been through the ringer. You know, because you can kind of smell BS from a mile away. Well, the kicker is, um, you know, we we've kind of got a responsibility because the 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 normal person does look for somebody to connect with and follow that person, right? And right. and that is a lot of responsibility. That person is going to be you because you're continuing on this path of, of influencing. And uh, it's a lot of responsibility. It's a lot of responsibility. I personally don't want it because what I try to do is I try to get people to, to think for themselves and not look for somebody else to follow. But mm, that yep, that's yep. normal. That that that's part of our our uh, primal uh, existence is to group together, find ourselves a strong leader that can protect us. And you know, at a primal sense, you know, if we feel if we feel that we are are lesser in a certain area, we want to learn from somebody who is more efficient in those areas. So uh, we'll follow that person, and. You, you know, people have to watch that because, first of all, everybody's everybody has flaws. Nobody can be right 100% all the time. Richard's pretty mm -hmm. damn close, but he's not right all the time, right? That's true. So, yeah. And you can't be right in all areas. It's like, you know, people are beating up on Elon Musk. He doesn't know shit about Bitcoin. He doesn't know yeah. shit about cryptocurrencies. He might be a genius in rocket science or whatever, but he doesn't know shit about cryptocurrencies. You cannot have all the knowledge in the world. Your your hard drive is not that damn big, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I've got the problem where I overwrite the hard drive all the time. I spent uh, two years in electronics, uh, uh, electronical mechanical cluster, uh, programmable controllers, computer interface, soldering circuit boards, making robots. You know where that nice. got filed? My useless information, Ben. 
I can barely tell you a capacitor from a resistor now because it was information that I got when I was in high school and I was, I was going to Votech that I never used. I never used that. That's not what I wanted to do. So it got filed and, you know, they say you, you don't use it, you lose it. That's true. You know, if you're constantly packing more information into your brain, something has to be deleted. There's only so much room on the hard drive. And uh, it's scary. I came to that realization. That is something that is very terrifying because you don't get the pick. Yeah. Your brain picks what it keeps and what it doesn't. And mm. sometimes you'll sit around and you go, hmm, what have I forgotten? <laughs> I don't know because I've forgotten it. So therefore, what have I forgotten? You know, so it's 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 a fun experience. I, I like what you said about that you, because because same thing for me, right? I never necessarily planned to like get into streaming and stuff like that, but uh, hexologist always kind of said like you know do a consistent schedule if you can. That way you know people kind of know when to uh, attend. But anyways, what I was gonna say is I like that you talk about like teaching people to think for themselves, right? Instead of following one person just blindly a hundred percent of the time and. Unfortunately, not just in crypto, but just in, in life. In everywhere. reality, just, just in life, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It seems like that, that that always happens where you see someone and, like I said, whatever topic it is, it seems that there's always a, a certain amount doing that. And so it's a good point that you mentioned, you know, teaching people to think for themselves because that's the most important part, right? We've, we've all learned that experience and a lot of it's from, uh, you know, just, just learning and living and stuff like that. But to be able to kind of pass on that uh, information for other people to hopefully not get scammed, not get wrecked, and not uh, follow the wrong people is uh, is a betterment of the human humanity. Well, we don't tend to question, right? We, we take things at face value for the most part. If somebody is a professional podcaster, we assume that they're there and that we assume that they have X amount of followers because they're giving valuable information. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? I'm a pretty damn good makeup artist, and I'm better than a lot of the, the girls on YouTube that are doing makeup. Yeah. But they got a lot more followers than me. But I right. bet you, I bet you, I, I can outrun them all day long in the shop, right? So, uh, people, people like personalities. People like uh, you know entertainment. Uh, people like the pretty girls and like to click on their stuff and tell them how awesome they are. Uh, you know, so there are all these different reasons why people choose to follow, but that the following likes, likes are not dollars. Okay. Right. That's something very important to remember. Likes mm -hmm. are not dollars. If the likes are not putting dollars in your pocket, they really don't count for much. Right. Sure. Uh, now, mind you, it's, it's nice to see that people support you. And it's good, but when you're trying to hold that as leverage over somebody and saying, I've got more followers than you, okay, do you delete trolls? Because I delete 20, 30 trolls a, a week, you know? Right. And I see somebody come across my feed, and I'm like, this dude's a troll. Bam, dumb. Mm. He's not He's not interested, you know? I don't want to educate, you know, I want to educate people that are educatable, right? Yeah. I don't want to waste my time on these people that are there for no other reason than to cause trouble, malice, and, uh, you know, try to undo what I try to build, right? Yeah. And when you're trying to build people's confidence, the last thing you need is somebody there doing their spider, 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 <laughs> scare tactics, spider, look at the spider, look the spider. You know, it's, it's insane, dude. It's so insane that people have nothing better to do with their life. You want to find unsuccessful people? Find the people that sit around on their computers all day just to bitch at people. Mm, you know, mm -hmm. just to get their one little one little word lick in there. Ponzi, scam. I don't know what those words mean, but they're good to scare people with. Right. <laughs> no, I mean, you're definitely right, Johnny. And like, you know, the, the crazy thing is, is I, I know you've been in, you know, you're a hex OG and, and same thing with me and, you know, been following Richard since before that. But uh, at the beginning, it was very prevalent, right? Day, day one of hex, uh, Richard did the interview with Tone and the two lawyers, whatever, that's fine. But then... So people at the beginning, a lot of it's due to like misunderstanding and not actually doing their own research. But to your right. point, they'd always do the spider thing of like, you know, Ponzi scam, stuff like that. But I mean, however, however long it's been now, 
uh, X amount of like you know year and a half or whatever, almost two years later, it's like you guys really have have no excuse. And so uh, to to your point, like the the gentleman yesterday that that Richard had uh, not even debated, but that he had kind of like slaughtered, that guy had had really old talking points. And Richard even said it himself that the guy was just material. like he had. <laughs> He, he hadn't updated his worldview, you know? And so, the great if he's a Bitcoin OG and bought Bitcoin at a dollar or whatever, but did he hold and did he also, like, learn as the technology, you know, progressed in crypto, but not in Bitcoin, so... No, he lost it all. Yeah. Uh, you know, lost it all. So, he, he, he didn't get it. And again, you can be a Bitcoin... It's like, uh, I went to a trade show, right? Mm -hmm. So... I went to a trade show and I caught this guy uh, that had six mass designs and you know they were average and uh, mm -hmm. we showed up with a full rack wrap around uh, four booth space me and my buddy and uh, he was coming over and kind of staring down our work and, and just making a making an awful face and uh, yeah. you know it's like you know, we're, we're trying to be nice to him. So this was a new show, so I guess we were on his turf, right? So we just showed up with, with this whole selection, this blow, mind-blowing selection. And uh, he's sitting there with a few designs, and he does this show every year. So that's his territory. So he's like, uh, oh, so this is all you guys' work? Like, you know? And uh, um, he's like, oh, I do maths too. I said, really? I said, so how long have you, how long have you uh, been doing this? He's like, 30 years. And I look over at his display and I'm going, <laughs> how do you even respond to that, right? Yeah. You know, uh, it's it's like, this is all you've done. You know, yes, you may have the time in. You may have been in at this point. But if that's all you've achieved for 30 years, that's not really a lot to talk about. It's like the guy said, oh, I wrote a white paper. What, did you write once upon a time on a white piece of paper? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that how you define your white paper? Did yeah. you read? Did you read the Hex uh, Layman's Guide, which mm -hmm. is a complete mm -hmm. user's manual because it's the only crypto that actually requires a complete and comprehensive user manual? No, because cryptos don't come with instructions. Because all you need to do, need to know how to do, is send. That's mm -hmm. it. That's like yeah. the function, right? So now we've got something that is way beyond that, and they're still trying to compare chess to checkers, not realizing that the pieces have changed. They have different movements. They have different uh, purposes. And even though the board looks familiar, the game has completely changed. Completely. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly right. And, you know, to your point about uh, you could be doing uh, makeup videos and whatnot, and you'd you kind of out class and outstyle all of the the people that are that are at the top right now it goes to show you that you know for, for instance like bitboy and stuff like that like the the thing that you're kind of doing with uh, when it comes to the the honest ranking websites right and you got coin market cap per se that that you, you just got so many bad actors in the space that claim to be you know the the righteous thing and it ends up being just a whole bunch of lies and, and same thing with the uh like i mentioned the influencers and so it's really cool that uh, a lot of the hexagons, like pretty much every hexagon that I've met, has a uh, kind of like Kareem says, like kind not nice type thing. But we all share something uh, very similar in common, and we want to educate people. And I think that that's and we really today. important. Check this out. We matched. Oh yeah! <laughs> Didn't even realize that. Yeah, you got to stand up, take too. your screenshot, take your screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny it's a man day, guys these, yeah. these where we're at right now you may never see these prices again yes well, can it go lower yes but when it gets bought back up we go on we go on well, dude in, in in the beautiful thing is right is i uh i see my coworkers that some of them kind of got in maybe a couple months ago and it's funny that that people consider this a dip because yeah i mean right now we're at eight pennies but like a week ago shit, right. i mean just look at a week ago and so the, the thing is, is like cryptocurrency and, and hex, but uh, it, it's really spoiled us. And so, yeah, something pumps up, you know, 500x or sorry, 500 percent, you know, 5x. And then it drops down 25 percent and people act like it's the end of the world. It's like, no, right, like, right, you, right. they're all look, 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 there it's <laughs> falling, it's falling. And then you look at the rest of the chart and you're going, well, maybe not so much. <laughs> Dude. 
Big Payday was exactly like that. Like uh, yeah. someone that I know personally, he he wanted to speculate on Hex, and I told him like, "Hey, man, if you just stake for this one day, you're gonna get thirty percent, whatever it was." And he ended up selling it like uh, like fifty percent of a penny, something like that. And and you zoom out and you look at the charts now. And I like I said, this person zoom in, I know zoom uh, in to the Big Payday section, all you guys. Right. Zoom in to the Big Payday section. What he's talking about is freaking hilarious because we're looking at that right now. It's that buy the rumor, sell the news mentality that happened right before Big Payday, and anybody that sold before Big Payday was the absolute biggest mistake you could have possibly made in Hex. That is like the one time where you will kick yourself for the rest of your entire existence because what it did was they created the bottom. Those people, they created that bottom, right? So that meant they got the worst price in history that they were ever going to get for selling their Hex. And then right after that, look where we are now. And we're doing the same event again. This is another event where we're talking about doubling your coins. It's very much like Big Payday. The the uh, the uh, whole uh, event is very very reminiscent, and people are behaving in that same way. So I've I've got the share screen if if you're interested, oh, and we can kind of just yeah, I can uh, pull that up. J- just uh, the stream. There you go. Okay, so so yeah, to to Johnny's point, I mean, Big Payday was November November nineteenth, right here, and. And obviously there was people that, that had speculated. And like I said, the, the person that I know, like right here, uh, about 50% of a penny. And so, sure, you see this this big run up, uh, the big run up, and then you kind of see the, the sell down. But then if you just kind of like slowly... Look at that wick down there. How low is that wick? Show how low that wick is. I think it's like 20% of a penny. Somebody, yeah, yeah. <laughs> somebody sold their hex for 20% of a penny. 20, what was that, 20 hex for a penny? Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. They sold 20 hacks for a penny at the bottom of that. They created that bottom. And then where did we go, Brian? Take it away. Yeah, I was going to I was gonna say if we, uh, not like I'm some chart master, but just to uh, to kind of give people a, <laughs> yeah, if you, if you literally just zoom out and kind of even where we're at now, one second, it's, uh, yeah, 40x, 30x, you know, some, uh, 39x. And so that's that's just insane. Just I from mean, that to, space, just for that little space there. Well, well, so to your point, you know, every dollar. So many people, yeah. To your point, they are looking. They're they're traders, like Richard mentioned. They're they're looking at this. You know, what is this one month run or something like that, as opposed to the longer picture. And so, um, that's pretty much all I was. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I was going to show. But like, yeah, when you zoom out, you can just see like. How it's gone diagonal up and then it's gone just vertical like this is just parabolic right here what we're doing uh going into the sacrifice phase and, and whenever that's announced obviously is going to be uh very unique but it's it's just cool to see that hey we were on the right side of history and did do our own research and thought for ourselves and it, it's nice to see that that's uh paying off right and that we can also educate people as well because the thing that sucks the most is like i said the person that i know freaking one of them one of the people bought safe moon and they're like why shouldn't i why shouldn't i buy this over hex and it's like oh my god like have you not listened to a word that i've told you these past like you know 30 why, times that we've why talked why <laughs> should something charge you this these are the questions you gotta ask okay where does the money come from that they're paying you does it come from the contracts or does it come from other users so mm-hmm. this is where people get confused on this whole ponzi thing right when the money comes from another user that's where you get into the Ponzi thing. When the money is coming from the contract, the contract has the permission to mint it. So it's like a lot of these things are like, okay, well, we're going to pay you interest, but you lock up your coins and you're paying a 10% fee to get in. So when they're charging you an upfront fee, you should be suspicious immediately. Why? Because that upfront fee is what they're using to fund it, right? Right. That's what they're asking for is that upfront fee in order to fund it. See, you're not paying, now there's Ethereum fees. We have to pay transaction fees. I didn't like that at the beginning of Hex, but I understand why it is and you know what it is. But uh, yeah. that's a different story. But when someone wants a percentage of what you're purchasing, you need to watch that shit. And there's been several of them built on Hex and a lot of those cashed in and a lot of those are responsible for the dips that we had. Mm-hmm. And they're still running. So you got to watch that. You got to watch that. When somebody's asking for a percentage, 
of what you have, why are they doing that? And why are they at, why are they taking another percentage when you exit? Right? That's that's problematic. So yeah. uh, you know the hex bay thing, I was very gun shy on initially because for those per particular principles, right? Totally. Um however been burned before. <laughs> yeah. However, uh, when the dev actually did explain it, if it was a safe contract, I do understand what they're doing there. Because mm -hmm. what they're doing is they're they're basically charging you a service for using the using the app, and then uh, they're trying to prevent people from selling the stakes. They don't want you to sell the stake, so they had to put a penalty in there in order to keep you from selling the stake. Uh, so you would take a hit, right? What they're doing with the hit is what what actually makes it kind of interesting if they do what they say they're doing, which was the fact that they were going to make little paydays. So basically that they were redistributing those penalties to to the rest, you know, to everybody because that person chose to end their, you know, tr transfer their stake. Uh, those were extra. It was an extra added payout per T share per day sort of scenario that it would result in because they were they were ending those stakes. They would stake them for 15 years and then nuke them. Assuming that that's what they did with them. You know, so there's there's all there are trust issues with that on whether or not it works as intended. But I understand what they were doing. But initially when you talk about taking 10% of somebody's stack or 10% to exit, that's the shit you really got to watch for because mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of things built like that, and that is usually where the rug pulls are. Well, yeah, I mean, Richard talked, like, in that instance specifically, Richard talks about it. Like, it's uh, the Sapin one specifically was a, a copy and, like, a fork Proof of, of weak the, hands. Yeah, yeah, and so it's like we've seen this before. Like, the people that are getting into it now, they weren't in crypto in 2017, but mm -hmm. what they don't realize is it's it's exactly what Richard talks about, uh, that it's, it's, it's an it's hourglass. It's the recycling of narratives. It's the recycling yeah. of narratives, and that happens with the same. I've seen advertisements for VeChain. Uh, that's great. I heard that advertisement five years ago. Thanks. Yeah, yeah it didn't work out yeah. then. It's not going to work out now. Uh, you guys still haven't done what you said you were going to do then, and I'm hearing the same mm -hmm. story now. Cardano, win smart contracts. No, they don't have to do that. So it's a recycling of narratives, right? So they start up the hype cycle again. It's all the new people coming in that haven't heard these stories yet. So they're literally recycling the narrative just for the new people, and it's very disgusting, right? Mm -hmm. It's very disgusting for the people that have been in because we've heard these stories before. We know how they didn't turn out. We know yeah. it's nothing new. It's just another promise and a wish, you know? Let me ask you uh, to change topics just completely. Um, I guess, uh, are you excited for, like, pull chain? And, like, how excited are you? I mean, I know, obviously, we've got the sacrifice phase, and then we've got the, you know, launch itself of the chain. But uh, being, th being that it's the second project, I mean, as someone, as you probably remember, like, uh, Richard's early streams, he always said he was never going to create like another cryptocurrency, right. but he, he well, did so to be the base the layer. And... New, no, it was, it was, he, he would have never done so if ETH would have got their mm. act together. So it was yeah. out of necessity. And most great innovation comes out of necessity. Um, the way I look at Pulse is very simple. It's like somebody's going to show up and say, hey, I'm going to give you the same exact phone that you got only I'm not going to charge you a service plan, and it's free. That's Pulse. So right. they're walking up to the Ethereum holders, and they're saying, here, here's your new new vehicle, uh, you know, and uh, go ahead and drive it. It's yours. Uh, and that's awesome. Uh, I don't know how I feel about price with Pulse. Mm -hmm. I do know that Pulse is going to have to mature. So, uh, you know, I'm... If what I get in Pulse is definitely going to have to be like a two-year hold. So my perspective, totally. with Hex, I've, I've totally changed my perspective uh, as a result of Hex, seeing how things should be done um, and realizing how inadequate everything is in the crypto space. The, 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 the strangest thing in the world is as much as we like to brag about how innovative Hex is, it's not as much as how 
also next is as how inefficient everything else is. Mm -hmm. uh, what Richard did was he took something that worked in the real world and put it on the blockchain. Uh, and he's very humble about that when he says that. And it works in the real world and it'll work on the blockchain. But we don't have a lot of people in the crypto space actually working on real solutions to real things. They like to create problems and then pretend they have a possible solution for them and sell you a narrative. So there's not a lot of competition. So when, when I hear people like, oh, well, Texas is never going to go to the top one market cap. It is the best thing out there, period. Whether you love it, hate it, or whatever, there is no comparing anything else to it. Even OG Bitcoin. Look, guys, I got a smartphone here. I'm not running around with a brick phone in my head. I'm not using a landline. Okay. I'm not playing on an Atari 2600. I'm not typing yeah. on a Commodore 64. Technology advances. Okay. MySpace was replaced with Facebook. Okay. Binance was not always on top either. Binance replaced other exchanges. There used to be just Mt. Gox was like it. You know, back in the day, uh, how'd that work out? They became obsolete. They, you know, they, they took people's money. They, they, we had issues. But the point is, the environment is constantly changing. And humans are change resistant. And mm -hmm. innovation is nothing if not but change. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I mean, it's, it's interesting. I mean, Richard kind of gave the analogy with uh, with Bitcoin as far as it not necessarily evolving as a technology and kind of use the like the fax machine analogy. And like mm -hmm. the way that I see like Hex is like, you know, like he mentions uh, it kind of being like the, the dumb piping, like Hex is like the, the new fiber optic or whatever it ends up being where it's like, hey, we've got something that that works like you mentioned. It's the second most popular product at the bank, you know. The certificate of deposit but no one has ever done that for uh crypto and for the blockchain and so it's amazing because like you mentioned there we see it so much whether it's litecoin whether it's these hourglass things they're the recycling narratives whether it's the um they're not the original or whether it's a recycle and the same thing with hex it is the original and it does have the first movers advantage and it's got someone like richard that knows what he's doing you know he mentioned it the other day you know he's a mensa and he's he just got the experience he's got the um you know everything to kind of make sure that this gets done right and that the technology was solid and so the thing with hex is cool is because when it gets copied over to pulse chain like it's just a smart contract so that code's already been complete the lines have already been written and when it copies over to pulse and when that's launched it's just going to operate you know flawlessly yeah and uh like, like I said, man, there's just not anything in the space that can compete with that. We've got people running around going, there's no use case. Are you kidding? I mean, we, we need to backspin that. I, I think we really need to backspin that. So what is your use case for your coin? Totally. Explain it to me. Uh, do you realize that your coin is inflationary? Do you realize that your coin is centralized? Tell me how your coin is decentralized. Tell me how your coin is, you know, uh, you don't want us to talk about price? Tell us what you like about your coin. Price immediately comes up, right? They don't like us talking about price because they don't like being reminded that they're getting their asses kicked, right? That's, that's really what it comes down to. They don't want us to talk about these things. They want us to shut up and go away because they don't want to face their own reality. They don't want to face the reality they bought something, they have a relationship with it, they, they feel very strongly for it. It's like that, it's like uh, having that girlfriend that's cheating on you, your best bud says, hey dude, she's cheating on you. And you're mm. like, nah, man, not my girl, she'd never do that. Yeah. You know? And then right. you find out, yeah, yeah, she was. So it doesn't mm. matter how strong your emotional attachment is to these things that you emotionally attach yourself to, it does not change the reality of it being what it is, no matter how strongly you feel. So for the people out there that are still screaming, Hex is a scam, they cannot seem to come up with a logical explanation for it. They like to use scare words that they don't understand the meaning to. And I mean, we can sit here and cover it, but it's really unnecessary at this point, because first of all, sure. 
us defending hacks isn't necessary. We can look mm -hmm. at our app and see what's in our account and know that they're wrong and we're right. Yeah. That's it. We understand that we are getting more coins every day, regardless of the price. No matter what, every day we are staked, we get more coins. They are not. They hate us for it. <laughs> yeah. It, it's so true. I mean, like you mentioned, Johnny, like, yeah, sure, the, the price fluctuates, but that's just in dollar. I mean, when you've got the, you know, the T share, the trillion shares in hex, that only goes up per the smart contract uh, in hex value. And so, oh, sure, it, it went down a little bit. It had a little bit of a dip after a whole week run up. But then that T share price just keeps not compounding, but it keeps going up. Uh, and so when it does run up again, like I had a buddy call me during the big uh, Bitcoin dip when Richard had called the top and he's like, Brand, you know, I, I was kind of like a naysayer and, and doubter of Hex, but why is it not doing everything that the market is doing? And I was just telling him, like, it's just like what Richard said. It is the better technology, like you mentioned. Yeah. It, that has to do with the correlation between USD. So mm -hmm. the primary True. amount of liquidity in Hex is connected to the USD DC. So what happens is Hex price is unaffected when people sell Ethereum and people sell Bitcoin. It's unaffected because you have to sell Hex or you have to buy Hex in order to affect the price. So uh, there's somewhat of a correlation with Ethereum. So it will go down a little bit with Ethereum. But if people are not selling Hex for Ethereum, or, or if they're not, yeah, if they're not selling Hex for USDC, the Ethereum price goes down and Hex price goes up because it's relatively gaining on Ethereum. So what we want to see is we want to see Hex continue to gain and weigh, and that'll be, so when, appear, when Ethereum does pump, then there is a correlation because we catch its pump up because mm -hmm. we have gained the way. Uh, when it dumps, uh, the, the way value dumps in USD value, uh, we, we gain on it. So it's, it, it's beautiful, actually. It's, it's really beautiful because it really is, it is decoupled from. It's not completely decorrelated, but it is decoupled from. And that's, that's great. Yeah, I mean, I remember when, uh, when Richard had mentioned like, hey, you know, people on Uniswap that are providing liquidity for Hex Ethereum, you might want to consider moving that to USDC, right? And so I, I remember kind of thinking like, huh, that's, that's kind of interesting. And, and the thing is, is uh, he was already kind of like so many steps ahead. But, but yeah, to your point, there still is, I don't know, I don't know the exact numbers, but call it say like 25% Hex to ETH and then 75 uh, Hex to USDC. And, and yeah, that decoupling and that decorrelation is uh, is something that people notice. And and the other thing too is like the daily payout, since the contract itself is just based on the the stake length and based on the the shares that you have, it's really cool that even people that you know that I onboarded like two months ago, they're like, man, why does my why does my amount of hex keep going up? And it's like. That's what I was trying to tell you, you know, like it's right. earning interest and, you know, part of it's based on inflation, part of it's based on people that end their stakes early. And so it's just cool to see everything uh, running flawlessly, running smoothly. I mean, 100% uptime when you've got Richard that has his list from like 2019 that he constantly updates and it's just rug pull, rug pull, BSC, rug pull, you know, like in all these. And here scams. he is spending all this time identifying all the scams and they're calling him the scammer. He's yeah, telling everybody, yeah. watch out for this, watch out for that. Look out there, look out here, look out there. And they're like, literally, don't listen to this dude. He might tell you the next rope pool that I'm going to sell you. <laughs> exactly. No, dude, that's that's how I found Richard Hart in the first place. Like in 2017, I was in Litecoin and people were like, oh, Litecoin's silver, Bitcoin's gold. And for whatever reason, I was on Reddit and had found out like just a whole bunch of people talking crap about Richard. And I was like, man, in the past, anytime I've heard someone you know, one side of the story, I always wanted to hear the other side. And so the you second should. that I heard Richard, I was like, man, all those people, like to your point, it, it's like blindness, you know, blindly following the, the herd and whatnot. Like, no, do your own research like everyone claims, right? And and listen to those people that, that they're, you know, calling a scammer and stuff like that because it's blatant slander and it's not true at all. And so the, the moment I heard Richard, I was like, man, this guy is legit. You know, this is the guy I've been looking for. 
isn't it isn't it funny how this crypto space is supposedly about freedom, hmm. censorship resistance, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and then you find out that that uh, you know the 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 two main websites that list coins can censor anything that they want and any time that they choose and put it in any order that they want and they're not responsible or liable whatsoever to reporting accurate data to you. Isn't it interesting how, uh, you know, people can tell you not to listen, to listen to this guy over here and talk as much smack as they want and, and sell you all these different rug pulls while, while keeping you from, from listening to the one guy that's actually trying to help you over here. You know, I mean, it's, it's fascinating, right? Uh, you know, they're, they're paid to promote coins to sell you. And Richard's not charging anybody a dime for anything. They're, they're selling trading courses. They're selling, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the flavor of the month. They're selling uh, yeah, buy groups. trading all this, all this garbage that they're feeding people. And they want you to stay away from the one guy that says, Hey, Hey, let me tell you the truth. Now stay away from that guy. <laughs> well, you're, you're right. I mean, it's just like what you mentioned, uh, before I joined the stream, you know, when, when you're in that position, I mean, uh, Richard, especially, but you get to a position where it's like, you do have the fucking money and you don't have to worry about like leeching off of your followers and whatnot to gain a couple of shekels or to, you know, promote this uh, cryptocurrency of the week, right? You know, that's the most disgusting thing that I remember in 2017 is like, you know, top five alts of, of the week. And then generally they end up being bought bags that they've already purchased. And then yeah. when they see the little bit of pump from their followers, you know, dump. And, and Hexologist, shout out to him. He actually had a massive compilation on like oh, LEO God, yeah. trades and so many people where it's like, Oh, they're calling Hexacam, uh, Hexa scam, and then he Show does his here, research on them. Here. Yes, exactly, exactly. And and we need that. We need that. You know, we really do. You know, it's almost like somebody needs to go through and uh, audit them for all their shills, mm -hmm. right? Audit all of their information. And I mean, we take screenshots and stuff like that. Heck, Hexa was doing great because he was, you know, doing the Photoshop thing and, and just taking the little clips. But I mean, here's the thing, people love their influencers and even though their influencers are cheating on them they're not going to listen to the buddy and they're just going to take the whooping it's stockholm syndrome right yeah it's like freaking exactly. stockholm syndrome where people accept abuse as normal they start showing affection towards their abusers because you know even though they're in that 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 hostile situation it's all they know right so totally and that's what people that's all everybody's known in crypto space is exactly that is the abuse that is in crypto space now is that good for adoption you know when new people come in and they lose all their money how is that good for adoption and these people want to talk to us about adoption should you not reward people for holding their coins should that have not been the first i'm not gonna curse first thing <laughs> you should have added to a cryptocurrency is to reward people for positive behaviors. And that's what Hex does. That should have been the first thing, but no, instead we have all these people that are incentivized to encourage you into negative behaviors so that they can profit off your head, right? Just the head count. We got viewers. We get enough viewers. We can get sponsorships. We get enough sponsorships. We, we can just say whatever we want. We just do this and this and this, and we make money, and who cares what they do? And then they smile to your face and stick a dagger in your back, and it's all blood money. You know, it, 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 it disgusts me, right? So I'm, I'm glad the hexagons are, are, are stepping up and, and, and taking that place. But, you know, those influencers started out as reporting news. And they were paid by the crypto agencies, Coindesk, Cointelegram, to literally sit and read what they tell them to, just like the news media. Mm -hmm. So we have basically a new crypto establishment that is struggling True. with all of their might to make sure you never look at Richard and you never listen to a damn word he says, because if you do, it might make sense. Yeah. I mean that that's exactly right. I mean I know you'd mentioned be uh, before I joined that when when everything's going up in a bull market and to be honest I kind of fell uh, 
you know, as a victim to this as well in 2017. But, but anyways, yeah, you listen to, yeah, yeah, you listen to someone. It's like, oh man, this guy's got you know the crystal ball. And uh, long story short, like you mentioned, when the bear market comes, which I mean, Bitcoin's been doing and the rest of the market's been doing since it fell out of the parabola. Uh, When it comes, those people just magically disappear and stop doing their top five altcoins of the week. And, you know, they just disappear on social media. And so to your point, it really goes to show you that, that, yeah, it is just a cycle and it really is just a gimmick. And they talk about building the space and gaining adoption and mass adoption. And then they hurt the people to come into the space. That is so detrimental. That is so detrimental to it. That that is not. They are the worst thing for crypto adoption ever, because people like them, trust them, fail. And you know, when you stick your finger in an electric socket and you get zapped, you're most likely not going to do that again, right? Mm-hmm. Simple human totally. behavior. When you come into the crypto space and you get greeted by the Walmart greeters of the crypto space, which are these people that are shoved right in front of your face when you enter the crypto space, are you likely to continue? No. Like, me and RG both, man, we were like, screw this crypto shit. Both of us. Me too, and, yeah, me too. <laughs> and, and Richard Richard said, hey, you know, I'm going to do this thing. And it's like, well, you know, let, let's let's take a look at this. Because if mm-hmm. anybody's going to fix things, it's going to be this dude. Because yeah. he already knows where cryptocurrency fails, and he is not afraid to address it. As to where everybody else is going to tell you what you want to hear, and uh, trying to make everything all fluffy and puffy, he is he is aware and experienced enough to know, hey, this went wrong, this went wrong, this is where this went wrong, this went wrong here, this is where this goes wrong, and he's going to make the adjustments needed to improve it. It's kind of like, uh, I, I like to refer to this as uh, the, the, the Bruce Lee method, right? Uh, Bruce mm-hmm. Lee uh, developed Jeet Kune Do uh, by taking traditional martial arts and cutting out the bullshit, right? Mm-hmm. So that was that was that was the idea behind that. Whether you like Jeet Kune Do or not or Bruce Lee or not, I don't care. Sure. But that's yeah, the exactly. point that I'm point that I'm going with. Totally. Um, is, is once a person has experience, they can then make the alterations. Don't go to a McDojo where they think they're teaching you some kind of dancer sized martial arts. Those people have never been in a fight in their life. So mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but true, Richard true. has been in the fight. He has been in the fight. He has seen the things that have been wrong and knows what is necessary to make those corrections. And, you know, from a, from a, from a product development standpoint, uh, you know, I understand, you know, the, the crypto space creates its own problems to create fake solutions. Richard's actually trying to make the solutions in the crypto. You know, he's not trying to create new problems. He's trying to address the problems that nobody else is willing to address. He's trying to make the adjustments that are necessary in order to accomplish what crypto is supposedly trying to accomplish through mass adoption. And we have the tools to do it. And we have the product to do it. It's just going to take us a little bit of time. I mean, with as much as we've moved just within this year and a half, it's, it's, mind-boggling but again it is actually a higher indication to the weakness of the other products versus the fact of building something that actually just works right and i'm not trying to be little hacks at all but i'm just saying everything does suck that damn bad and you got something that actually does what it's supposed to and that 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 shows these kind of results right Totally, man. It's uh, yeah, you're not wrong. Um, and I'm actually gonna have to hop off soon just because I only have a, a handful of minutes. But but yeah, I mean, I definitely agree, right? Hex has has proven itself over time, and and yeah, the last thing I'll say is it's, it's to your point. It, it's so interesting, and it really goes to show you where the space as a whole is at currently. When when a majority of the people, it, it's all like acting and pretending. I mean, you know all about this as far as. Um, you know, movie sets and stuff like that. Cosplay. But they're, they're it's cosplay. Yeah, These people exactly. Do not know what the they're talking about, <laughs> and uh, it's cosplay. So they they pretend to be experts. They pretend to know what they're talking about, and they're taking advantage of people because since you don't know, they can pretend they know because you don't know enough to know that they don't know. So it takes people like us to come out and go. 
They don't know shit. <laughs> Just like the guy yesterday. I mean, Richard, yeah. uh, I'm surprised the guy, like like Richard said, clearly didn't do any of his research. Nope. Otherwise, he would have realized he was going to get slaughtered. But, you know, Dunning-Kruger in full effect. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, Brad. Well, thank you for joining me, buddy. I appreciate yeah, you coming man. on. And uh, yeah, you you have to hit me up. I'm I'm trying to take it easy and not stream, but I just kind of oh, I just kind of had to get out there today a little bit. So, uh, dude, it, it, it's true. I mean, sometimes yeah, you, you get compelled to be like, man. I mean, just like you mentioned, you know, speaking truth to power. Like the cool thing is, is Richard kind of led by example, and like we're just the ones that have have listened, have have already kind of had these things uh, in the first place, and just been able to. You know, kind of like like you mentioned, yeah, you, you like I never even intended on on doing streaming and stuff like that. But I saw RG three, I saw Hexologist, and I was like, man, these guys like I'm I'm a people person. I read personalities very well, and it's like these guys are legit. And and whatever they are, I want to stream on uh, stream with them uh, for for a little bit. And so that kind of led into like you know a weekly Discord Syndicate thing, and then it led to like hey, you know, let me spin off a little bit and just stream on my own channel. But it's so cool, the uh, the people that we have. It really it really is, you know, people always talk about, oh, the community here. And it's like, this is the real community. This is where the technology, the innovation is being done. And we see when people develop these, you know, maximalist, tribalist uh, mentalities, say with Bitcoin, the guy yesterday, like, you just, you, you lose information that's actually happening to the reality, like you mentioned. They're kind of just painting this, like, fairy tale reality. And in reality, what what's going on is what we're doing, so. And how many how many uh, hexagons have you met in real world? Uh, only RG3, yeah. I mean, I've okay. introduced some of my family members to, to Hex, but yeah, that doesn't necessarily count. Yeah, just, just okay. one RG3. So you've met RG, okay. I've mm -hmm. met... In person, Coffee, mm -hmm. Gary from Fund, you know, Funding Jam. I've met uh, Matty Allen, and I've met uh, Timothy Benjamin. So there are yeah. four people that I have met in real life that are honest to goodness, wholesome Mexicans that took the time to come out and visit me to meet me, which I thought was awesome. You know, yeah, I would totally. never think to ever talk to anybody in the crypto space. I certainly would hop back on a plane if I dropped off in Miami and saw that shit show. I'd be Me getting too, right back man. on my plane and go, I am not hanging with these these guys. Totally. But, Lunatics. But it was so cool. You know, it's so cool to make the connections that we have over over this, you know, past year and a half and to actually meet some of those people in person. Unfortunately, I'm not getting to go to the Hexagon Vegas meetup. Sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, but exactly. there's over 200 people, 200 Hexagons that are pulling together. And my meetups with, with the, the different Hexagons is, is also, you know, it's very small. You know, RG did his in uh, San Francisco, I guess, with mm -hmm. San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So one they did places, a meetup yeah. there. There was another one in Florida. I mean, uh, we're just all guys that 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 are able to see what we see, and it's nice to have somebody else to talk to because this reality is hard to accept. Mm -hmm. This is a hard reality to accept. When you work hard all of your life, and then to be able to look at your account and go, "Yeah, I could work today, but by the time I'm done working, I'm going to have more money in my account than I would <laughs> that I collected from working." That is a I've hard. Got that reality. same dilemma. Well, it's it's good for you, young one. You don't yeah, have thirty yeah. years behind you where you're like you work hard, you work sixteen hour days, you push, you push, you push. You know, I, I worked really hard to get my studio. This was my dream, right? To to right. own my studio. This was unfathomable, right? My parents told me I would fail. Everybody told me I would fail. I pushed through it, pushed through it, pushed through it, pushed through it, and finally, you know, I got my own studio. That was my end goal, my end game. Mm -hmm. Now my end game, I think maybe it's a theme park. Nice. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's it's like, what do you do when you get there, right? Mm -hmm. What do you do when you get there? And all actuality, now I've worked my whole life to get this studio, but X is outperforming anything I can do in the real world. It is literally outperforming any job I can get on any film set or any project I can commission, or anything I can even think of or have the hours to do, it's outperforming that. So it's like, 
I did all that stuff, but I didn't have to. Yeah. <laughs> so now what do I do with my time, right? Because my time has been motivated about the next job, the next job, the next job, the next job. Because when you punch the time clock, you punch the time clock, you go home, mm -hmm. and it's over. When you run a business, you're always in. You're always in. You're like, how do I make money today? And now I've lost that. So now I'm I'm going through this big adjustment on how do I want to spend my time? What do I want to do with it, right? Because I don't have to do anything for money. I don't got to do nothing for money right now. Never in my life would I think that I would have that issue. Mm, yeah. So now I'm coming to terms with it. So that's, it's interesting. Yeah, to, to your point, I mean, same thing with myself. Yeah, never thought I'd be in this scenario and... And yeah, I mean, I, I saw your video the other day where you're like, oh, I've got, you know, X amount of dollars worth of mass or, you know, the labor thing that you're doing for, yeah. for the creation of it. And you're like say, saying the same thing, you know, just, yeah. uh, that, that hex by the, time the way I'm that it, this video, yeah, by the time I'm done with this video, I will make more money in my hex account. It's like, and I was yeah. right. I literally posted the chart. We pumped at that point in time. And it's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> but people don't understand that's because, you know, I was in so soon that, you know, small, small mm -hmm. moves are so significant that it's, it's just not real. Well, yeah. And, and that's the last thing I'll say is, is that's what's so amazing for the people just getting in now is, you know, you've mentioned it before, like you're the, like one of the original people that I've heard do this with the diamond analogy, but the magic trick, but, but yeah, there is a unit bias that, oh, you got hex at, you know, multiple zeros mm -hmm. and then. And then a one, um, and so you don't well, think you, you can think go about to it. Go. Yeah, you got to think about it as anything, okay? If you buy mm -hmm. a product of any kind, it doesn't matter what it is, the, whatever widget you buy it, you know that that widget is worth a certain value, right? So you wait to sell that widget at that value. If somebody comes in and says they wanted it cheaper, you don't sell that widget because you know what it's valued at. The problem with cryptocurrency is people don't know what they're valued at true so because they got that deal they cannot uh they can't detect because it's nothing to them you have to value what you hold if you value it others will value it if you don't value it then you're going to end up selling it for way less than it's worth exactly couldn't agree more man yeah that's definitely the to your point like the the main message at the end of the day because you know, I know some of the people that are participating participating in Pulse, they're like, they were early Bitcoiners and they sold, I mean, the guy yesterday, he's like, oh, I bought Bitcoin at a dollar and Richard's like, well, how much of the 6.5 million X did you, <laughs> yeah, how much did you realize? Like, what are you bragging about? And to your point about calling someone on their bluff, you know, the psychology of like uh, uh, projecting, right? They're just projecting all these insecurities. Which is crazy because once you realize to, to read people and read what they're doing, it's like, oh, like, here's an attack. Here's like, let's just point it the other way as opposed to it being pointed at me that's speaking truth. Let's try and, you know, uh, oh, it, you know examine. It, what it's showing is it's showing how incompetent the people in the space really are. The longer true. they hate on hacks, the more incompetent they appear because their arguments challenge their whole narrative. You know, it's like... Uh, how can you call Hex a Ponzi and Bitcoin not? Hex right. actually creates something Bitcoin does not. Where does the use case? Well, what's your use case? I mean, yeah. So it's like uh, it's like they it's like they're trying to gain knowledge by attacking something else to prevent from accepting that what they're involved in that their own securities about what they're involved in. They want the answers. Totally, man. They don't have the answers. So they do this through through attacking through proxy, right? Mm. And the problem is we have answers. Yeah. <laughs> that is the problem cuz cuz they're it's like what Richard talks about with the uh, um, one of like the Silicon Valley episode where it's like, "Hey, we don't we shouldn't develop a product. We should develop something that, you know, is constantly it's just like Cardano, right? It's constantly, you know, coming in the future." And, and it never ends up coming to fruition. And that well, that's way, the game. That's, that's been the crypto game. They're always promising, always promising. And, you know, it makes you wonder if it's not the same devs 
that's doing all these different rug pulls, it could literally be the same team of people that are just moving from project to project, scamming people over and over and over again. And totally, people have this, totally. this concept that anonymous is good. No, it's not. You don't know who the fuck to, to sue if you need to, right? Yeah. Um, that That's the problem, right? And they're like, oh, anonymous is good. We want to stay anonymous in the crypto space. Oh, we want to stay anonymous, so we're not going to hold anybody legally responsible for anything. Bullshit. If you want to change, you have to step out there and make it, and you have to be willing to put yourself on the line to stand up for what you believe in. And if you have an honest product, you should have no problem putting your face on it. You should have no problem standing up for what you believe. If you can't do that, then you're just a coward. You know? Mm. Uh, it's It's sad. It's sad because, you know, uh, we have all of these uh, coin market cap sites. Have you ever met anybody from any of these coin market cap sites other than Clay? That's part of the reason right. why I like Nomics so much. Same. He's willing to come out and talk to you and correct situations and address them. And he is a real person trying to run a real legitimate business. These other people, ah. They're trying to jack you. That's why they hide. That's why they hide, and that's why they hide things from you. That ain't right. Someone has to draw them into the real world. And since people in the crypto space want to stay anonymous, somebody who's public has to do it. Somebody who's willing to say, you know what? <laughs> I'll go camp out in Delaware for a bit. I ain't got no problem with that. Right. You know, you got to draw them into the real world. If you let them stay in their little fabricated space of reality where they have control, you're asking to get your you're asking to get beat. You know, mm. it's like the Matrix, right? They control all you see in here. They're controlling everything and pulling the levers. And you know, literally, you know, this is damaging. This is preventing the crypto space from growing because unless yeah. you're paying off the right people, you're trying to run a le legitimate business. You're never going to get noticed unless you go through their gates. So innovation cannot happen as long as people like them are in control and there are no regulations or or uh, repercussions for their actions. Totally. Well, well, cool, man. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, have to end it there on a on a good note and uh, you know get ready for some some other stuff that I got to do. But yeah, dude, appreciate appreciate you letting me on and with your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. How do you know? How do you know? <laughs> I was yeah. 20 cents. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, man. Unlimited energy. <laughs> but um, but yeah, man. Uh, looks like uh, real quick before I go, it looks like Crypto King he uh, he mentioned that uh, Richard's going to be doing an interview tomorrow or live stream, I guess, with uh, with these guys at I think seven uh, ten ten uh, yeah, ten a.m. ten a.m. Yeah. is Eastern Standard Time. So so that'll be cool to see him live, and then uh, yeah, man, we'll have to uh, convene again soon and. You know, hopefully uh, do uh, do a chat, do a stream on my channel, and kind of you know chit chat a little bit more when we've got some uh, some more time. All right, man, we'll do that. I was, I was just sitting here reading Crypto Kings. So let's do. Thanks for joining me, Brand. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, if you want to, uh, just send me a send me a Twitter. Uh, I'm out of okay. I'm out of Twitter jail again. So hey, that's perfect, man. Exactly, man. Hell yeah, all for speaking the truth. Well, we'll appreciate you, Johnny, and uh, yeah, we'll be in touch soon, man. All right, man. Take care.